Hello and welcome to our next episode of Tea Time to You with Head Coach Darby Rogo, the Tiffany University Men's Golf Program. I'm Russ Snyder, voice of the Dragons, alongside Head Coach Darby Rogo. Coach, welcome back from South Carolina. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing very well. It's, it's actually good to be back in Tiffin. I'm excited to get back to do the show. Well, you know what's nice, Coach? You look outside, and it's the first time we don't have snow flying through the air, bitter cold outside, the sun's shining, lots of people thinking about golf. Well, I tell you what, it, it was a great week for us in South Carolina, but to come home and see sunshine and see some grass here, still a little brown, but to get home and see that uh, the weather's starting to clear up really feels good. Well, we talked last time we were at the program. First of all, let's uh, thank Scott Turner and all those crew here at Shell Shuckers for having us out here. Shell Shuckers located at the corner of 224 and 53 on the south end of Tiffany. They do a great job out here, and they graciously accept us in here every, every week to do our program, and uh, so we got to say thank you to those guys first and foremost, but last time we uh, talked about start of spring sports at Tiffany University, and we talked a little bit about a review of the winter sports and Joe Gressel and his accomplishments at Tiffany University. we got another athlete at Tiffany University who needs some recognition as well. The men's and women's indoor track and field programs just competed at nationals, and Tiffany University has a national champion. And not only one event, but two events. Lamar Hargrove doing some great things. 60-meter and 200-meter dash to the Tiffany University national champion. What a great accomplishment. Well, I think it's great uh, to see, you know, our, our not just – um, the track team at all the spring sport teams and then the winter sport teams have great seasons and Lamar to be a national champion is just such a great feather in the cap for the program. I'm a top five finish at indoor nationals, yeah. which is amazing. Um, the GLIAC conference is so strong in track and uh, to see our athletes compete and do that well is just awesome. And uh, congratulations to Lamar and Jeremy Croy and his staff. Uh, they do such a great job, and I think it's a testament to our growth as a Division II institution and shows you that the uh, opening of the Hemminger Center a little more than a year ago was a, a good decision. Yeah, 10 All-Americans coming out of the, uh, the national championships, and I can't imagine what it feels like to cross the finish line. I know you're a national champion. All the schools across the country, Division II, you're the best. That's going to be a fantastic well, feeling. To be the best at anything has yeah. got to be a great feeling, but then to do it twice, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, and some of the and, uh, women competed as well, and um, they had some great uh, finishes as well. Deborah Broderson, as well as Katie Gerhardt, Sarah Klo, and Ashley DeWitt, all with uh, national recognition, as well as on the men's side, uh, the 1,600-meter relay team of Sean Borland, Dom Colvin, Reginald Martell, and Aishan Garrett also. They finished second in the country, so some great accomplishments off our track and field program. And as you said, Jeremy Croy doing some awesome things with that program. But uh, congratulations to all those fine student athletes and a great representation of Tiffany University. Uh, you know, and the greatest thing about all those names that you just read, they're all quality young men and women. Yeah. And that's what's really cool about it is that they're not just great athletes, they're great students as well, and they're great representatives of the uh, university. Well, you took your golf team down to South Carolina for uh, Battle of the Beach, and uh, you guys – did pretty well down there finished second tell us all about it we did we played really well you know first when we talk about thanking people you know scott does such a great job for us here in tiffin i want to thank the staff at the caravel uh matt daly the general manager at myrtlewood uh, the pine lakes course where we played and then uh, firehouse subs they were all of our uh, sponsors of the event they helped us put on a great event ken thompson at the caravel and uh, heather lee and chip Everybody there and Emily, they were fantastic. We couldn't have been happier with our inaugural event. And obviously we came in second. We played very solid for two days. We had great weather. The golf course was in great condition. And uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, who edged us out on the second day um, with a four under 284. I mean, tip your hat to them. Yeah. They play extremely well. They're a great program. Uh, four out of the last five years, they've appeared in the national championship uh, out of the East region. So they're no slouches. I mean, we, we got beat by a very good team. And, and uh, while, you know, I wanted to win the event, our guys are pretty solid for uh, you know not being able to practice as much as we would have liked this winter. Yeah, the uh, after day one, your team actually is in the lead. You guys come in and shoot a 296 after day one. You had to be feeling pretty good. You were posting lots of pictures on your Twitter account of the golf course. The golf course looked absolutely beautiful. It was. But uh, you had to be pretty proud of the way your guys came in. And you know, and on the first day of play, jitters must not have really been there. They came out and put up some scores. Well, you know, it's the same five guys that played in Las Vegas and. Yeah, obviously, we played very well there, um, you know, shooting the one over par 289 on the second day. Uh, John Tidenberg continued to be very steady for us. In fact, that first day of 296, um, you know, we actually played our last three holes over par. Oh. So we were in the uh, mix of, you know, making even a bigger lead. Um, <clears throat> but we stayed solid, came back the second day, stayed solid. You know, Corey Martinez played very well, 74-75. Tyler Moranville, 75-73. Uh, he's really starting to come into his own. Tidenberg, very steady. But the guy that I was really proud of was Luke, who struggled a little bit in Las Vegas, earned his spot back during qualifying prior to the event, and then came out with a 73. He actually had 17 greens that day wow. and had 
uh, a couple three putts. Otherwise, he could have been really low. And, and he came back the next day, hit another 15 to 16 greens, which we talked about. Mm -hmm. He had five three putts on that day to shoot that, that wow. second day score. So um, we get that putter working for him, and he's going to be, he could do some really uh, special things the next couple weeks. Well, you had three of your student athletes finish tied for third, and John, Tyler, and Luke. But uh, St. Thomas Aquinas with the one and two players, Thomas Linehan, a 70 70. He must be a pretty quality golfer. Thomas Linehan is one of the best players, not only in the uh, Atlantic region, but he in the East Atlantic region, but he's also one of the top 25 players in the country. I mean, I got to you know meet him, and um, I knew his name because being a member of the GCAA, I'm very aware of who those players are. Mm -hmm. um, what a quality young man. Stephen Ferrara, who's the coach at St. Thomas Aquinas, runs a quality program. We're excited because they've already committed to coming back to our oh, event excellent. next year, um, and I think we've talked about it. I got home on Monday and started checking my emails, and I've got three or four teams that were not at the event asking what do we got to do to be in this well, next year awesome. so i know next year's event is going to be even bigger uh we're looking at an idea of hosting an event in february in arizona we're going to do some special things and you know this is a building block for uh the future for us and whenever you host an event and you have teams that want to be a part of it you know you're doing things right sounds like it's time to take tea time to you on the road <laughs> hey i'm more than happy to take you anywhere you want to go with us no you, you talk about the coaches contacting you want to be a part of it talk about that from a coaching standpoint what what are those coaches hearing what are those coaches finding out about this uh, event that makes them want to be a part of it well I, th I think part of it is when they're contacting us they're hearing good things um you know obviously from the golf course you play uh the the, the myrtlewood resort is just a fabulous facility and they treated us like it was our home you know, we're, we're traveling all the way to South Carolina to host an event, and they're acting like we're the, you know, the team that is from that city. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, so not only hearing good things about the golf course, the Caravel Resort is fabulous. I mean, the people down there, we've been going there for over 11 years now, and we'll continue. We've already scheduled for next year. The way that they treat us is just unbelievable. And, um, you know, we had a, a, a huge team dinner for everyone on Friday night. And it was catered as well as any event I've ever been to. And in just the way they treat the college athletes, you know, it wasn't like they wanted to get us in and get us out. It was, hey, what can we do to make this experience even awesome. better for you? So I think the coaches hear those kind of things. And, and I like to think that I run a pretty uh, organized event, and that's important. And yeah. the, the stronger the competition we have at the event with the great golf course, the more teams want to be a part of that. And you talk about running as a very organized event. I'm sure when you look at events to take your team to, knowing that event is put together, you know, very organized and things will run smoothly, it takes a lot of the headache away from you, and that's probably a, a magnetic force pulling teams towards you. Well, event. I would hope so. You know, I mean, whenever you go to an event, you look at the quality of the field in the event, number one, and then the quality of the event in terms of the way it's being run. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the assistance that we received from Matt Daly and his staff at, at Myrtlewood and, you know, the, my guys helping me out and, you know, doing the little things like having sponsorship banners and having yeah. sponsors in general and mm -hmm. uh you know getting organizations from the community involved it kind of pipe, hypes it up a little bit and you know as a coach i want to take my guys to events that they feel like oh i feel special it's why we go to las vegas because mm -hmm. troy halterman at umsol runs such a great event you know it's why we go to the brickyard it's a quality field brent nickerson and indy runs a great event i want our guys to remember those experiences and when we get to be the host I want to do the same thing for the other teams. Yeah, well, St. Thomas Aquinas only got you by seven strokes overall, and you talk about playing those last three holes, you know, over par. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a lot. You can probably vision seven strokes a year that your oh, kids. Oh, without a doubt, we board. talked about it after the round. Is you know where could we have saved a shot here or there? And you know our guys had their heads down a little bit. I said, first of all, you know, there's no reason to hang your head. We put together two solid days. Number one, uh, and it's still March. Number two. It took a four under par, 284, to beat us. You know, tip of, tip of the cap to those guys. I mean, to go out and go 70, 71, 71, 72 as they're counting scores. I mean, we didn't play bad. We didn't give it away. Um, but we, you know, we do have some areas we can work on. I said, I would rather know right now there's a couple things we can work on, whether it be three putts or getting up and down, uh, then, and have a month to prepare for postseason than to peak right now. Yeah and not be ready for postseason. So I like where we're at, and I'm okay with the runner-up finish, although it was pretty tough giving away some hardware to somebody else. Oh, I'm sure. But, yeah, as you said, you look at the six schools uh, competed in that, and one of those schools competes in the GLIAC Conference and Ashton University, mm -hmm. and you guys got by them by about 17 strokes. So you would be pretty proud of that. Well, you know, 
um, the head-to-head in our region is very important, yep. and that's what determines postseason. So, you know, Darren Jones at Ashland runs a great program. They had a great fall, finishing runner-up to Malone at the conference championship. Um, you know, he's, I think, the last six years has had an individual or a team make the uh, Super Regional. So he's done a great job there. So anytime you can pick up a head-to-head against a quality program in the region, it's it's a win for us. Well, next up for your kids is the um, Great Lakes Midwest Regional. Is that what's coming up next for you, for you guys? No, that is. We, okay. we play uh, second or first weekend in April. I think it's the 5th and the 6th down in Batavia, Ohio, which is just outside of Cincinnati. It's mm-hmm. our first Great Lakes Regional. Um, you know, we need the weather to stay good because yeah. we need to play that event. We need those head-to-heads against other teams. Like I said, top 10 make it in the region, um, into the Super Regionals. And right now, we're borderline 10, 11, 12, just depending on who you ask. Now, I'm a regional raider, so I have us at 10. So, yeah. uh, you know, we... Uh, we really need to get those head-to-heads because there's a couple teams we have uh, a, one loss differential to that if we, we beat them there and then we can beat them in Indianapolis, we'll lock up that last spot very easily. So what would happen if that event were to whether be a weather effect and you guys weren't able to do that? Is there ways you can make up those head-to-heads? Well, um, you know, that's something that, you know, I talked with Blake DeBrain, who is our women's coach. And we'll I've join talked us with, after a little while. I'm looking forward well. to having him on the show today. Um, you know, I'm trying to build a contingency plan. Mm-hmm. You know, does it mean we have to find a golf course down south that we can invite everyone to come to play and see who shows up and, and uh, you know, put together something last minute? You know, I want to get those rounds in, not only for um, – our postseason consideration, but also individual consideration in terms of all conference, all region. Um, you know, this, the crazy thing about coaching golf in the north is we may have to scramble and put something together really quick. Yeah. Luckily, you know, south of us from Kentucky down, there are plenty of golf courses. We should be able to find something. Well, that's part of playing golf in, in Ohio, especially mm-hmm. northwest Ohio this time of year. But, uh, you know, congratulations to your kids, you know, finishing as well as they did. And, you know, poor Corey Martinez, he finishes one stroke behind his teammates, but he ends up in seventh place compared to third. Oh, I tell you, that's the <laughs> thing about golf. And, uh, you know, that's the thing that as a regional Raider, Every shot matters, yeah. and we talk to our guys. You know, is is uh, the crazy thing about this game is whether you hit the ball 400 yards off the tee or you miss a three foot putt, they still count the same. So mm-hmm. every shot does matter. And and Corey, you know, like I told you earlier in the year, has been so solid, and, and I'm so proud of him. And and, and he's such a, a great young man, and he's going to be a great assistant coach for me next year. But I want him to finish this senior year strong and lead this team the way he has been. His job is to shoot 74, 74 better every time, and he's been doing that. And I mean, that's all I can ask. I know you, your top five scores are, are who, you know, count on the, uh, the scoreboard for this. How about some of the other kids? Anybody surprise you um, Do anything that Well, I'll tell you, you what, there were some uh, guys, you know, obviously our five that, you know, has been in the lineup all year, played solid. And like I said, to see Luke bounce back from the Vegas uh, trip. But we had some younger players who have been, you know, kind of, I don't want to call it JV. They're, they're developing players, mm-hmm. you know, underclassmen. Tyler Reese has always played solid. i um, looking forward to, you know, him continuing to improve. Um, Tyler Sheppens, who's a freshman from Canada, came out the first day, shot 73, struggled the second day. Um, but he shows flashes. You know, I also have to prepare for next year. I think we have a great recruiting class. We've yeah. got some really good players coming in. Uh, a couple in particular I'm really excited about. Um, but to see our sophomores and even freshmen and uh, to improve while we were down south, I mean, that's important for us to do to build our depth. Well, the, the traveling with the team and actually getting to be out there on the course and everything, I mean, that, that all pays dividends in the long run for your program. With, without a doubt. I mean, you know, tournament experience is one thing that you cannot simulate. You can practice all day. You can, you can qualify all you want. But getting actually into a tournament playing with or against people you don't know and uh, competing on golf courses that require uh, good shots – I mean, that's, that's how you learn to separate yourself as a competitor or just as a guy who practices a lot. Yeah, the Dragons finished second at the Battle of the Beach to St. Thomas Aquinas uh, down in South Carolina, and they're getting ready next for the Great Lakes Midwest Regional coming up as it says uh, April 5th and 6th. So, all right, Coach, let's talk a little PGA golf now. Love to. Let's move on to the PGA game. And uh, this past weekend, the uh, Valspar Championships, uh, John Senden is the uh, winner at seven under par. Did you get a chance to see much of it? Watched or? it, actually, yes. We, you know, when we had downtime, you know, obviously there's only about three channels that I watch, and Golf Channel's one of them. And, yeah. and uh, so we had some downtime. We watched uh, that, that tournament. And, you know, that golf course is so tough. And you know, so many good players. The leaderboard was going crazy for a yeah, while. It was. And uh, to see, you know, John Senden basically 
it was a battle of attrition, just outlast everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, Kevin Na is such a great player. I mean, he went, what, his first 36 holes without a bogey? Right. So yep. um, we, we saw some really good golf, and, and uh, you know, the guys who all finished in the top 10. One of the guys that I thought played really well, and you didn't see him a lot on TV, was Gary Woodland, who I think is one of the great emerging young players. Mm -hmm. He's an a very athletic. Uh, Robert Garrigus was playing solid, and yeah. then just ran into a buzzsaw. I mean, it's golf. Yeah. and uh, But, you know, what a great, uh, great event. And it's just adding to, I think, what's going to be a tremendous PGA season. When you when you see Kevin Na's name up there at the t on the leaderboard, one of the things that always comes into question is pace of play. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he's much quicker now than what he used to be. I mean, Correct. people always bring that up when it comes to him. How do you feel about that? I was curious. You know, when I saw him up there, I was like, I got to ask Darby about pace of play. Well, pace of play, to me, it, it drives me nuts when people play slow. I mean, there's no reason. There's no reason that a round of golf should take more, more than four hours and 20 minutes mm -hmm. if you're making a genuine effort. You know, I teach that business of golf class, and I tell all my students, you can be bad at golf, but you can't be slow. Yeah. And uh, I think there's ways that you can play faster. Now, our event this weekend, we averaged under 420. Okay. And that's the goal. I mean, the kids played very quickly, and, and uh, you know, there's ways that you can be ready when it's your turn. And I think that whether you're on the PGA Tour or in college golf or playing with your buddies on the weekend, there's ways that you can play this game faster. Mm -hmm. And I think that pace of play is a reason that sometimes keeps people away from golf because they don't want to spend five hours on the golf course. Exactly. I don't. Yeah. I, you know, even if I'm playing poorly, which happens a lot lately, <laughs> um, I want to make sure that I'm playing quickly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've, you know, you brought up the point of, you know, recreation golf with, with your buddies, and nobody nobody really has time to go out. But you don't. Donate no five one hours. has time for five hours. Yeah, and, and people I think want that's... to go out and play 18 holes, and they realize it's going to take that long, and then they end up only playing nine holes. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and you get frustrated if somebody in front of you is playing. Folks, if you're a slow player, let people play through. Exactly. That, that's, that's the biggest thing right there. Mm -hmm. Some people, you know, I work at a golf course in the summertime, and I'll hear from folks, well, my money's as good as theirs. Correct. They can wait their turn. Well, Let's be nice to well, each other. You, let's, let's let everybody. Some people are just quicker than you. Let them go right, through. and you enjoy I, you enjoy being outdoors. I get it. That that's one of the things about golf that makes it great is enjoying the outdoors, enjoying the camaraderie of, with your friends that you're playing with. But there's no reason to be slow. I mean, you can do that. You know, you want to have long conversations. Do it in the 19th hole. Yeah. Support the golf course there. Um, I just think being ready when it's your turn. Um, you know, knowing the rules. That's yeah. one way we can speed the game that's up for true. a lot of Very amateurs. True. Knowing the rules. Um, but, uh, you know, Kevin Na, he has that little tendency to um, get hitchy in his swing, and I know he feels bad about it. I mean, I've been to events where I've watched him play in person. You can hear him apologizing. He doesn't do it on purpose. But the PGA Tour does have a timing system, and that keeps those guys and moving. we're talking about some mm -hmm. new penalties that may come Correct. to play right. with, uh, with slow play as well. well so next uh, tournament on the PGA Tour, the 20th and 23rd, uh, 20th through the 23rd, the Arnold Palmer Invitation presented by MasterCard at Bay Hill Course, and that's in Orlando, Florida, and that's always one of the uh, favorite courses on the PGA Tour for the players. Well, you know, first of all, Arnold Palmer hosts it. Yeah. If he invites you, His you go. I mean, yeah, you be it's going to be a great event. We talked about, you know, trying to attract college teams to our event. I would love for, you know, the same the same reputation is, you know, it's whether it's the Muirfield Tournament at, you know, at Memorial, or Mor Memorial Tournament at Muirfield, Jack Nicklaus, you're yeah. going to go to that event. Yep. You know, outside of the majors, there's this is one of those events where you're going to see a great field. I mean, I believe Tiger's a defending champion. Yes, he is. Um, he always plays well there. Um, there be lots of iced tea and lemonade. There'll be lots one. of iced tea and lemonade, <laughs> you know. Uh, but, um, you know, what a great golf course, what a great event, and uh, the field is going to be stellar. And I think that you know, obviously, I think Tiger will play well because it's one of those courses he always plays well on. Well, it depends on his um, health, too. Yeah, and back. it does. You know, his back has been an issue. Um, but I think, again, you're going to see a young player. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Justin Rose. Yeah. You know, if he's in the field, I haven't checked the field list, but if yeah. he's in that field, which I assume he is, he could play very well at that you know, Some people complain about Tiger with, with his back and say, you know, he should be out there. He should be out there. But, you know, if you're – don't – you swing the club the way he does mm -hmm. and just – you got to remember, folks – PGA Tour golfers are not riding carts. No. They're walking 18 holes, and, you know, whether you add up the amount of time you're actually swinging a club on a golf course, it's like a minute and a half. Correct. But uh, that takes out so – if you got a bad back, that is so difficult. Well, I mean, the man is such a great athlete, and he works so hard, like all the guys on tour. But at, one, at some point, especially at his age now, in his 30s, his body's going to break down a little bit. Yeah. I mean, he's been asking his body to do the things that it's done for the last 15 to 20 years. You're going to have – 
injuries. I mean, it, it's not just golf. We see it in football. Yeah. We see it in basketball. We see it in baseball. That, you know, there's a point, even if you're one of the best in the world, your body still breaks down. And, and you know, Tiger's injuries are obviously um, more newsworthy than others. Sure. But, you know, I remember when, um, you know, Tiger – or not Tiger. Phil had trouble with, with his, yeah. you know, his health. And, and uh, uh, you know, Hunter Mahan has had trouble with his health. And, and – but Tiger is more newsworthy, and so you hear about it more. But there's a lot of guys out there that are dealing with little mm-hmm. injuries. And, you know, the back and the knees, which are the two areas that Tiger's been injured the most, those are two areas you don't mess with. Exactly. You can't. You know, you can't do it. And so, you know, it's one thing if you, you know, your, your neck is a little sore or your, your ankles are a little sore. But when it's your back and your knees, you know, try to make a golf swing at 115 miles an hour with a bad back. It's yeah. not happening. And the purses can be as big as they want to be. But you ask any golfer on the PGA Tour. It's about the majors. Well, it's about the majors, and it's about longevity as well. Yep. You don't want to be a guy who just, uh, you know, injures himself yeah. and misses There's six, seven weeks. There's thousands of people went, went in your spot on Correct. tour out right. working their well, butts off every And you got to be day. in that 150, and, and, you know, from 120 to 150, it's, it's a matter of pennies in terms mm-hmm. of money won. And so events played, it matters. All right. Why don't we uh, take a quick break here, and we'll come back with uh, Blake DeBrain, the uh, head women's golf coach here at Tiffany University. Sound good? Sounds good. This is Tea Time to You with head coach Darby Rogo. Stick around. We'll be right back with Blake DeBrain, head women's coach of the Tiffany University Lady Dragon Golf Team. All right. Welcome back to the show. Uh, Russ is taking a little break, and I'm going to interview our my main man here, Blake DeBrain, the women's golf coach here at Tiffany University. Blake, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks. How are you? I know that you had a great week in Myrtle Beach with us, and your girls did a great job this week. Anything you'd like to tell us about the team right now? Oh, Myrtle Beach was, was amazing. The weather was great. I think the girls had an absolutely wonderful time um, getting to be out on the golf course, seeing grass. So that always helps being, being tough up in northwest Ohio, having all the snow. So being down there was great. Um, the girls had a great practice session. I think we learned a lot. We took away from the weekend. We're looking forward to this weekend. Yeah, that's right. This weekend you travel where again? We're headed down to Perry Park um, for uh, one of our regionals, start off the spring with a tough field, and I think we're looking forward to it. Good. Now, uh, some of the teams in the field, they'll be from your region. Uh, obviously, um, you know who will be there. Tell us about the uh, teams in the event. Teams in the event, we'll be seeing a lot of teams in our region, Grand Valley, Findlay, Ashland, um, ODU, I believe Indianapolis will be down there, Lewis, uh, Bellarmine. So it's an extremely tough field. Um, we're, we're ready, I think. Good. Now, I know that you know, most people don't know this about the women's uh, golf side of things. Uh, I've looked at the top 25 rankings. Within your region alone, I believe there's at least seven or eight teams ranked in the top 25 or receiving votes. Definitely. Our region and our conference is extremely strong. I know I've looked it up. We have three or four teams from the GLIA conference go to nationals every year. So we play an extremely tough schedule every week, and I think it's the best fit for the girls. I know we're only getting better every week. Right. I know that you've brought in some good freshmen, and let's talk a little bit about some of the girls on the team. Sure. Um, freshmen coming in, Sophie, Sophie Bourne currently is our one of our top freshmen. She's played in every tournament in the fall, and I, I, I expect her to continue to play every tournament in the spring. Um, we have Hannah Hunt stepping into the lineup this week. She's proved herself down in Myrtle Beach, and she's ready for the start. She's improved a lot in the fall, and uh, I expect her to do well this weekend. Good. I, I uh, know that um, you've been working very hard with the girls. Uh, what would you say is your identity as a team? I think our identity as a team is where I want it to be is the short game. I think we need to be spot on with when it comes to chipping, putting, and as we've spoken in the past, being from 150 in, um, I think that's a vital point we need to be the strongest at, and that's where I want our identity to be. Well, I know you're doing a great job with the ladies, and I'm proud to have you as part of our staff, and, and uh, I wish you the best of luck this weekend. I know you guys are going to do very well, and I know you're going to have a really strong spring. Thank you very much, and I, I look forward to the spring, and all the best with you, and look forward to seeing you in the postseason. I hope so as well, buddy. All right, we'll be right back. We'll bring Russ back in, and we'll answer your golf questions. Well, it's great to be able to bring uh, Blake DeBrain on, head women's golf coach here at Tiffany University. I don't know if a lot of folks know, but he actually played for you. Blake did play for me, and I'll tell you what, um, and this is no disrespect to anyone who's in our program. You know, I've done this for 15 years. He is arguably one of the top three players that I've ever had play for me. And, uh, you know, for him, he only played two years. He was a transfer. Um... He's just phenomenal, and he does such a great job with the ladies, and I'm so proud of the effort. You know, in his first year, uh, recruiting-wise, he is just killing it. Um, like you said, he, brought, he convinced a girl from Florida to come up yes, here and play golf yeah, in North he, he just signed another girl while we were on break. I mean, he is just getting after it, and he's doing a great job. I mean, 
we've had some good coaches here in the past and we've had some great players but I think he you know is, is one of the better ones that we've ever hired for the women's job and I mean just this fall alone he helped the girls go 20 shots better than the year before so um, I'd love to see what they're going to do this spring and I, I know the next couple of years are going to be really exciting with him you know, this is a, this year I've got to learn know Blake a lot more than I had in the last couple of years and he just Basically, seems like a, just a good dude. Oh, he's just a, a good guy. He's one of the best young men you'll ever meet. All he's right. great. Quality young man. Now's a point in the program where Coach Rogo is going to answer your golf questions. You can follow us on Twitter. What's your Twitter handle? Uh, well, there's two. There's at D Rogue or at D Rogues, and you can just find that by typing my name into Twitter or the T at T U Golf. It's at T U Golf, and that's one where you know we do a lot of the updates sure. for the uh, golf program itself. Yeah, and you can also find me at uh, Tiffin underscore Russell, and then you can follow us on uh, Facebook as well to post your questions, and we'll get those questions out here. Coach Rogo will answer them, and uh, here comes our first question from Ron. He wants to know, putting for me early in the year is always very difficult. Do you have some putting drills for early in the season to try to get m more consistency? Sure. I think one of the things that you, coming out of the winter uh, we've always talked about is making sure that you're starting to develop some pace. Um, a good drill, we just call it the ladder drill. You get on the putting green and take five or six tees and line them up about five feet apart, you know, starting at five feet to 10 feet to 15 to 20 and so on and so forth. Don't even worry about a cup right now. Yeah. Just, just worry about getting some pace and getting your feel back. I mean, a putting is a lot of feel. It's what I always tell our players, let your hands feel what your eyes see. You know, getting yeah. that feel of a good pendulum stroke. Obviously, just like the golf swing itself, making sure you're on balance, making sure you have good posture, making sure your setup is solid. So you're making a good back and, and, and through putting stroke, but just the T drill where you can learn to hit a, hit a five foot putt and then roll it out to f 10 feet and 15 and start to get a feel for the pace of the greens and you know, letting your hands get used to making that stroke again. And then when you're done with that, just go to five feet and just see how many you can make in a row yeah. and just work on, work on uh, getting the ball in the back of the cup and, 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 and getting the feel back. Another good drill that we like to use, and this is a competitive drill, we call it birdie, par, birdie, par, birdie, par. You set up two tees opposite sides of each other on the, on the hole about five feet. On the left side, you're putting for birdie, par, birdie. If you make the putt, you go to minus one when, you, when it's a birdie chance. If you miss it, you make a par. If you miss the par putt, it's a bogey. And then you go to the other side and it's putting for par, putting for birdie, putting for okay. par. And your goal is to try to go to 11 under. And you know that's a deep number. And, Sure. Five footer consistently making those, you know, it, it it really will help you lower your scores. You know, and people will go to the putting green when they're waiting, you know, for the first tee at their local golf course, and you'll see guys out there stroking, trying to stroke 15, 20 foot putts. Mm -hmm. Those putts, you sure you don't you don't need to make those all the time. You need to get them close. Those five foot putts that you miss, those are the ones that run your score up. Oh, uh, the three to five footers. You know, I watch a lot of amateurs. You know, that's the difference between making bogey, double bogey. Sure. That's between me double bogey and triple bogey. And uh, you know, I, I hate to say it, but most amateurs don't get up and down fifty percent of the time. Why is that? Because you're a bad putter or a bad chipper. It's probably a combination of the two. Mm -hmm. But if you're an okay, you chip the ball okay, and you're getting within five feet every time. How many of those are you actually converting? Yeah. Yep. All right, here's one from Mike. He says, looking to get a new set of clubs this spring to get ready for my the season this year. How do I decide? What, what do I need to look at when I'm looking for a new set of clubs? Well, I think you have to ask yourself a few questions first. Number one, how serious am I going to be? I, people ask me all the time, oh, I want to get new clubs. My first question is, clubs. how often do you play? If you're only playing four or five times over the summer, in reality, you know, you're playing less than 10 times over the summer, Get a used set of clubs. Don't go out and spend $1,000 on clubs. Mm -hmm. um, if you're saying, I want to make a commitment to this, I want to lower my handicap, I'm going to play 15 to 20 to 30 times this summer, you know what? Then go get fit. Go, go find a, a fitter in your area. Get the proper set of clubs. Make the investment. Because if you get a good set of golf clubs and you know what you're doing, you can have those for five or six years. Sure. Now, Russ, you know, I'm not going to divulge my age, but I've owned three sets of golf clubs in my lifetime. Okay. You know, the clubs that I bought uh, recently were from, you know, the tailor-made set that I have. I bought those a couple years ago and it was because I finally realized the clubs that I had from high school maybe needed uh, some new technology. Sure. Yeah. So, well, they would, Chef? Yeah. <laughs> they, <laughs> the persimmon woods, yes. Um but I mean, if you if you're when you're going on to do this, it's an investment, and you want to mm -hmm. make sure you do it wisely. It's, it's just like when you go buy a car; you don't just go, "Hey, I'm going to buy this car because it looks nice." You buy a car that you you know is reliable. You know, buy a car that works. Golf clubs should be treated the same way, and especially as well for you know gentlemen like us. We're both 
fairly tall. Correct. And just going in, picking up a, a set of clubs off the rack mm -hmm. probably isn't going to fit us very well. And if you're bent right. over too far, you know, it's Correct. so easy to you have pull bad off, posture. You're you know, to, you're, you're you know. going to you're going to develop bad habits. I think getting fit is extremely important with the technology that we have today. And you know, most of the uh, facilities. I mean, there's Dick Sporting Goods in Finley. They have a fitting there. In fact, one of the guys who works there, Andrew Bollinger, played golf for me, there so I go. know he knows what he's doing. Um, Make sure you get pr pr fit properly, and uh, you know I think you'll enjoy the game more. Absolutely, it'll take a lot of the frustration away. And along those lines as well, putters. There's so many different kinds of mm -hmm. putters nowadays. It's not just a flat blade putter. There's so many different kinds, and that's another thing where you just need to you need to putt with them. You need mm -hmm. to putt with all these different putters and find the one that fits you best. Because I've had one type of putter, and then I put it with somebody else's. I'm like, oh my gosh, this feels a world different. And then once it starts feeling right, that helps make those putts a little easier. I mean, you've got to like with the clubs you're looking down on. You've got to feel comfortable with them in your hands. But as far as putters are concerned, I'm always, I've always, i always said, when you buy a putter, it doesn't work. So just rent as many as you can. <laughs> Borrow as many from your friends as you can. Absolutely. Well, anything else, Coach, uh, before we uh, wrap up our program for this week? Uh, just once again, want to thank Scott Turner and everybody here at Shell Shuckers, you know, just letting us do this. It's, it's such a pleasure to sit down mm -hmm. with you and talk about my program and talk about Tiffany University Athletics, and I just look forward to doing this again next week. Reach out to us if you have some more questions for Coach Rogo to answer during the program. Also, if you talk, have a municipal course that you think that we would love to see, let us know about it as well, because hopefully this summer we're going to be getting out to as many courses in the Tiffin area and beyond that we can and feature those courses. Let some of you folks see some courses maybe you aren't familiar with. Go out and play their signature hole. Talk to some of the management of the course and help promote local golf in the Tiffin area because the more people playing golf, the better it is for us because that's more people want to hear what we're talking about. That's right. All right. Well, thanks uh, to uh, the staff here at Shell Shuckers, as uh, Darby said. And until next week, this has been Tea Time to You with head coach Darby Rogo. I'm Russ Snyder, voice of the Dragon, saying thank you so much. Thanks to Shell Shuckers. And get out there, hit them straight, make your putts.